Oh, look at how far he got. It looks so amazing. All the pieces hanging there. So let's dismantle this baby to get it all freshly repainted. That was easy like on a Toyota. Wow, this thing is actually pretty good. How about that? It's a Dana Exit. Yes, it is. You hear that? Air can. suspension. Nice. So easy. It's like a Toyota. Okay? Yes. So I will be gone for the weekend again. Christian will have to work alone on my poor little discovery. Look at that, what he did. We put it on a hospital bed. <sighs> the air escaping here too. See, it's bubbling. So the air is yeah. coming out. It has now all the time it needs. On our last video, we got the comment now that we have taken the body off, we might as well convert it to coil over. That was the dumbest that, comment. That was ever. the dumbest comment ever. Coil over is like a castrated discovery. Yes. Some things I don't need new engine mounts. Okay, they're still good. <laughs> okay, they're still good. <laughs> I'm gonna uga duga them out in a moment because then I can paint this much better below. Did you see how little corrosion on Brian's discovery was <laughs> when he took that transmission out? Yeah. No wonder the Australians always panic when they see our car. Yes, Here, and... In our area, this car has no corrosion. Yeah. <laughs> you want to see a rusted car, you got to go into the rust belt in the United States. The yeah, car. but that's because they use a lot of salt and they don't use any salt here in Germany, at least not in our area. Our activists would glue themselves to the salt truck. <laughs> you see, it's dust and it looks like new underneath. And Christian has problems with 17-year-old switches and connectors and plugs. If you got an old connector like this, which is really brittle, and it does not want to come off, use some compressed air. Because the latches are fully blocked in all the dirt, see how they nicely they work now again? And now I can work this connector out and probably break it because it's on camera. Yeah, well, the first one broke off camera. No, it didn't. <laughs> there, it's off. It looks like brand new on the inside. There's no reason to change this connector. It might be brittle, but you can always fix that in the Simpson Desert with a paper clip. So what are we going to do with that other? Broke off camera, nobody knows. Yeah, but do we need to buy a new one or can we leave it? My manual transmission. We already have that piece here, 60 euros, so if you can save it, save it. Well, that's kind of true for every part on a Land Rover, because the increment is 20, 60, 120. <laughs> There's nothing in between. Yeah. These air hoses look like new. We get a lot of comments saying that this is caked on mud and we can just take it off. Somebody wrote that this stuff on here can be knocked off and the shocks are still good. But it's... Indeed, it can be knocked off, but it looks like there is not much material left here. They would have worked probably okay for another while. It's still corroded. It's not much. Yeah. So, so all this came off our front shocks, but it's metal. It's not some sort of a dirt. It rusted away from here. 
but we bought new ones for 260 euros a piece and we're gonna put them in yeah so he's removing the wiring harness oh i like having my discovery on its hospital bed in the picture and my new discovery for my interim discovery which i'll take on a trip tomorrow morning here's a setup with our new to us discovery four got the rooftop tent on top got my rooftop box i actually have three bmx bikes with me but it's a pain camping without a proper setup i miss my slide out drawer i miss the storing space i have underneath my slide out drawer i miss my platform i just have at least twice or three times as much storage in my discovery three than i have in this discovery four i can't wait for my discovery three to be all put together in pristine condition with a <laughs> almost new engine and rust protection and everything <laughs> See, they rip off here. What are we going to do? We're going to get some new fasteners to mount them. The white ones rip off. I don't do electrics. So people always talk about taking off these dampeners or whatever they are called. I have to say, and I think Christian agrees with me, the Discovery has the smoothest ride. So we won't take them off. And I really do agree. Not just agreeing because I have to agree. I really do agree. That is a really badly corroded brake line. Same here in the corner. Ooh. So we will, of course, replace all the brake lines. You see, I'm inside my discovery. I'm that small. Number two. There's a little bit of corrosion inside. That one has a little bit of corrosion and we're gonna replace these. And these are fairly new from our last TÜV visit. Diesel line. I may have not bought enough rust solvent. Now it goes. That's rust solvent. They don't look that bad. Oh boy, do you want me to come? I always want you to <laughs> Whoa! This is good. Which is almost empty. I made sure of that. And hung up here. There we go. And we got it out. Perfect. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? Yes. I, I wonder where we got that great mud from. It is not from Australia, I know that. This off here with a rubber hose. Yeah, with a BMX hose. A lift is just something so beautiful. Look, I basically disassembled the whole thing after work. That's and I was great. no help. That thing. Yeah, it doesn't have a name. <laughs> yeah, but this thing can come out now. And all we got, oh, there. What? Oh. You broke something? Yeah. Oh. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> Stuff that needs to be painted. That's a wiring on it. And it goes all the way one time around. <laughs> Holy crap. What's damaged is some of these, they fastened with tie wraps. Many of these, they were. White ones. Yeah, the white ones were plug in. So I need to buy something what we can screw on or clip on into this size hole and then use tie wraps. Yeah. Everything else is really nice. Ah, this is quite a heavy piece. But I think they will not rust through, that's for sure. It's the second day disassembling the frame. It's after work and Vera isn't around. So uh, I gotta make progress real quick. Because I don't have to explain every step three times why I'm doing it and that it is not all wrong. So we're taking 
the brakes apart because I want to replace these cables. We're also going to take off the upper suspension arms in the rear because the bushings are worn. The ones in the lower we already replaced a little while ago as you could see in a previous video. Oh, beautiful. Use copper grease and everything is as simple as on a Toyota. Basically these, these two bushings got to be replaced. These will be reused. I got the rear frame completely disassembled. I also removed the parking brake module because I want to replace this cable on both sides. And I also removed the height position sensors because those bolts tend to be very badly corroded. And if you ever break one of those, to get them out when all this is assembled is a nightmare. So I'm going to replace these with stainless steel bolts. Now I got to disassemble the front. I want to take the calipers off and the discs to avoid getting them sprayed on and also being able to do some more painting here. I'm going to replace the brake lines anyhow. I got new ones. And I also want to remove the stabilizer bar because I got new bushings here. That's going to be another hour, I think, hour and a half, and then I'm ready to clean this thing. This is the only way. Looks easy once you know it. So I got the prep work completed. It's now ready for cleaning. And after cleaning, it's about two years of grinding and removing rust. And in the third year, we're going to repaint it. Hope you guys are going to enjoy that video series. So that was a pretty cold and messy situation here but i got it so next morning the frame is almost completely dry and i'm gonna start with the rust removal this will be a time lapse for you guys for me it will be about two and a half years of hard work so i'm basically using two different tools both of these are rpm regulated angle grinders and i'm using basically a wire brush in this shape and a wire brush in this shape say I'm making a lot more progress using these discs on the flat surfaces. They go down to the bare metal in no time. The top of the frame was really easy, but the underside is horrible. So it's just before sunset. I got a full day in this frame cleaning it. And that's about it. I'm done cleaning frames for the rest of my life. That's for sure. From the top, it looks really good. From underneath, it could be better. It's just much harder. It would be nice to just turn the thing around, um, but I don't have equipment to do that. Um, tomorrow is Sunday. Painting is quiet. So I'm gonna be able to start painting tomorrow. Now we come to the point, what paint to use for that frame, okay? I went with the same type of stuff what they use on the most abused equipment out there on the planet. Basically paint made for agricultural equipment, like excavators and stuff. This brand over here in Germany has what's called a rust stop. It has an additive included, which basically neutralizes the rust which is already on there and you can also use it directly on rust. 
This stuff includes something what you can buy separately, like this is a rust inhibitor or a rust converter. And trust me, what farmers use is simple, robust and well proven, okay? You may as well use that on a Toyota. And no, I'm not gonna use Leno Guard. Leno Guard is if you got some rusty chassis, you lay underneath on your lawn and you spray it on and you do that every few months. So what we're doing is a real paint job. Look how nice my frame is looking. I was gone all weekend. Christian had to work all by himself. That car can be sold now. It's gonna run forever. I just took it on two big trips. It drives like a dream. And here you can see the 18 year olds with the check engine lights on. Waiting for Christian to get done. Christian wants to take out the rear diff. This area just does not look pretty, okay? And there was no way to grind this down. So we're gonna take the differential out. Try it if it opens. Ooh. While we are in here, should we get new wheel bearings? No. What? Ah, cool. We're changing the oil more often than the Bundeswehr. Oh. See? Ooh, it looks like new. I told you we can put this back in. Ooh. What the? Oh, I am getting a rear diff. And this is already the 140 oil. Okay, you gotta stop recording now. <laughs> yes, but I'm. Because it comes you're watching out. the oil drain. <laughs> yes. Really a lot. Yeah, but that's 270,000, or is no, that just changed, five? I want to say 20,000. 140 weight oil is not good for you. Why? No. Yeah, that's good. Good, that was it. The good thing is a blacksmith knows how to use a hammer. He has the precision of a heart surgeon with a hammer. There. Uh, yeah, good. Now, Very well. And no, you're not getting new side shafts. I bet I will. Should have done that right away. Good. Good. Hang on, I lower it. So oh my. Balance it. So I missed one bolt, but it's difficult. Very well. Oh, if it drops it, I will get a rear locking diff. Oh my god. Okay. I'll follow Robin. These are things I won't do. Yes. This is a bell yoke. Yeah. Look at this forging here. Yes, incredible. Okay. In America, you would need a pickup truck to transport this. We put this in a B-Class. <laughs> yeah, the B-Class is a really roomy car. Yeah, in India, they would have it on a bicycle. Oh, this is beautiful. How are you going to get it out? Ooh, that's not my problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do one. Yes, I will. You can't do one. Oh, shit. <laughs> You're allowed to use two hands. Oh. <laughs> yeah. oh. oh shit! How okay, do you I do that? My left hand. <laughs> <Robin>. <laughs> beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. Oh my god! Everything looks so beautiful. Such an easy car. So easy to work with. You guys. A two-post lift is like the most useful thing you can ever buy. I took the rear differential out yesterday, so he has now easy access to that area. Yeah, I'm kind of <laughs> getting the burnout soon. <laughs> yeah, I'm no help, by the way. I nap during lunch break. You want me to look busy now. <laughs> and Christian paints a frame. Yeah, I'm not happy with you. Oh, what? It's just the first coat? Oh. It just doesn't. So this is the first light coat with the final paint. It's a flat black paint. I like the matte finish. That yeah. is so cool. It's not called matte. It's called flat. Flat black. Second round for the paint shop. We are using impact resistant agricultural paint. There is a harvester and 
excavator. excavator. There's yeah. a tractor. <laughs> it's perfect. Class. That's the Land Rover class here. <laughs> I get making a mess on camera, but he's doing a good job. Oh my God. Yeah, he knows what he's doing. Oh, yeah. It's going to look so good. So that's Christian small crawler. And maybe, well, maybe we should paint the frame next. We just had that body off. We know we don't have to do anything to this Discovery's frame. So the good thing is when you have red rust protection as a base coat is you can actually see once you paint your final color where you still have to paint, where you have missed painting and where you still have to do some work. Front differential looks nice now. There you go. And then it takes off all the rust and all the paint. And this thing will cut through flesh, okay? If it goes onto your leg, it will cut right in. So you better plan on a hospital visit. Yes, I think so. When I see that, I think I'm going to get the car ready. Well, that is how far we got yesterday. Actually, Christian did all of that. I just cleaned. Now these pieces can be painted black. And Christian is really looking forward to a day of more painting. Now she got it. Took a while. Ah, uh, the body is humming in the bag. Uh, let's just put 60 pounds of weights back there. <laughs> oh, look at how far he got. It looks so amazing. All the pieces hanging there. <laughs>